don't even know this video, man. Wow. Okay. Hold on. I don't even know if the tea is hot anymore, so I moved on to water. Diva Curl. The Diva Curl for all curl kind that has recently come under fire and has been canceled. What? Okay, well, this, this is gonna be a lot. So if you're just tuning in and hearing about this and thinking, what's the tea? Well, then you may need to sit down. But before diving in, I do need to address some disclaimers. One thing you should know going into this is that I have not personally experienced issues using Diva Curl. But I also do not use Diva Curl on a daily basis. Three, I want to address that I have mentioned Diva Curl products in some of my past videos. But may it be noted that I have never been paid by Diva Curl to do so. I simply share the products that I like. Now number four, this video is in no way sponsored by Diva Curl. Now five, I will not be sharing product recommendations in this particular video because one, I know this is a very vulnerable time and it's a sensitive topic for a lot of people and I am not just trying to sell products. There's a lot that goes into finding products and I will have to make separate videos for this. And lastly, having said all that, the intention of this video is to truly investigate this Diva Curl issue from an unbiased opinion. Playing devil's advocate, I'm going to be assessing the facts so I can share some truth. And then I'll share my opinion on what's going on. And well, if you're wondering who the hell are you to share your opinion, well then, hi, welcome. I am your main girl, Mel. I am a hair care professional that is a textured hair specialist and I strive to make people love and appreciate their natural hair. So in this video, we are going to investigate the Diva Curl scandal in relation to the allegations of hair loss, hair breakage, hair damage, and texture changes. And to do that, we're also going to evaluate all other contributors to these side effects. So whether you're using Diva Curl or not, you have experienced these struggles from either Diva Curl or another hair care line, or if you're a hair nerd like me, then you will want to stay tuned throughout this video. We're gonna explore it all. The scandal, the tragedy, and the truth. Let's get to it. So what happened? Basically, the news has broke after some curly hair influencers have spoken out about their experiences with Diva Curl, claiming they have experienced hair loss, thinning, compromised scalps and hairs, and even losing their curls. The issues expressed, the buildup, and then the sudden breakout of all of these cases, I have been considering the likelihood that these products are actually dangerous. But is it possible that Diva Curl isn't guilty? Or at least not entirely to blame? To be fair, again, devil's advocate, um, if we remember way back when, when, this is something we've seen happen before. When was the original cleansing conditioner? They had a class action lawsuit against them for hair loss problems as well. Do we see the similarities, especially in the product type? But that's not just it. In light of all these allegations from Diva Curl users, there are many people that don't use Diva Curl that are also experiencing the same issues. Is it a method and an application problem? And many of you already know how I feel about the curly girl method. If not, I have a whole video on why I disagree with the curly girl method. And the fact is, Diva Curl products are all made to follow the methodology of the curly girl method. That was a lot of methods. Again, although there are thousands of people experiencing these problems, there are hundreds of thousands and millions of people that haven't experienced any issues using Diva Curl and some that even say their hair is better than ever. The truth is, not all products are for everybody. Not all methods work for everybody. And correlation does not equal causation. Because if Diva Curl was allegedly unsafe for use on the hair and the scalp of humans, then wouldn't everyone be experiencing the same problems? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. But the question is, is it possible that Diva Curl isn't guilty? Well, to question that, you are dismissing the thousands of curlies that have reason to believe that Diva Curl is the cause of their problems. 
You cannot question the people. However, is this anecdotal evidence proof? Well, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of things to consider that could also correlate to these problems. But since I am in investigation mode right now, like a true Sherlock Holmes, I am going to explore all possible culprits to get to the bottom of these issues. So let's assess. What is happening to people's hair? Well, there are two major hair concerns. The first is hair loss. People are noticing accumulated shedding and hair fall, thinning around the hairline and overall loss of density, and even scalp damage. The second is hair damage. People are experiencing extremely dry and brittle hair, hair that is not able to accept moisture that is extremely damaged, breaking off, becoming stringy, and even straightening out. So we're gonna dive in. What causes hair and scalp damage? Well, the first issue that can explain why a lot of these people are having problems with their hair and scalp is most likely being caused by buildup. Now, buildup kind of sounds obvious, but it can be a lot more serious than it seems. It is not just weighed down hair and a greasy scalp. Buildup is actually a major hair care and scalp care concern that creates a snowball effect of problems. Well, let's take a look at their famous no lather, no poo. This cleanser follows the methodology of no shampooing, conditioner washing. But does it actually wash the hair? Or does it accumulate buildup? Well, this cleanser is mostly to condition the hair and to add moisture back into it and may be great for hair that has become very dry from over shampooing. But with consistent use and over time, this product is not able to wash the buildup, oil, sebum, and dirt off of the hair. We get buildup from environmental factors, mineral deposits in our water, and of course, over time, our products build up on the hair. So why does this become so serious? So buildup can make the hair hydrophobic. Hydrophobic hair is a condition where the cuticle and the hair strand has been sealed from the outside. Much like low porosity hair, it makes the strands very resistant to absorbing moisture. If moisture cannot get in your hair strands, it will get very dry from the inside out and become brittle and break. Some of the most common ingredients to cause this are coconut oil, shea butter, heavy emollients, occlusives, and protein. Hence why people feel like they have protein overload by associating it with hair that is very dry and brittle. All of these ingredients, including protein, will deposit into the hair strand. If it is not washed off with a real cleansing agent, they will build up on the hair, cause a ton of frizz, prevent the curls from clumping, get extremely dry, and eventually lead to breakage. But buildup also naturally occurs on the scalp, and this leads to more serious problems. Especially when we fall into the habit of conditioner washing, oil and sebum will build up on the scalp. Now what this is going to do is actually feed a fungus that naturally occurs on our skin called malassezia, and your scalp will turn into the ideal environment for things like dandruff to occur. Remember that dandruff and dry skin are different, Dandruff occurs on oily skin, and it is produced by this fungus, or yeast, if you will. Malassezia is a yeast, and when there's an accumulation of it on your scalp, it will lead to inflammation, and inflammation eventually leads to hair loss. And while some of the most severe cases and allegations are being made by long-term DivaCurl users that have almost exclusively been using DivaCurl, we may see correlation to blame the products. But this can happen with the use of any hair care line. If the hair is not regularly being cleansed, clarified, and removed of all the buildup, it cannot just lead to these problems like breakage and dandruff, but it will also create an imbalance of the hairs. Now, what do I mean by balance? Well, picture this. If we were to eat the exact same foods every day, are we going to have a balanced and nutritious diet? Absolutely not. You hit a plateau, become immune to your routine, and suddenly, nothing works. Eventually, your body is going to need other nutrients. Well, the same goes for our hairs. Balance means using multiple products for multiple needs. If we use the exact same products every single wash day, are we going to be balanced? We talk about balance all the time. Protein versus moisture balance, clarify condition balance, pH balance, a balance between hold and softness, volume and definition, humectant emollient, the ideal state is balance in all areas. Even if some products have protein and other products have moisture, can we be balanced if we're using the same thing all the time? Absolutely not. Fact is, our hair is constantly changing and it requires different needs every day. 
In a weird way, our hair is constantly getting more damaged just because of everything that we put it through every day. So because our needs change just as our hairs do, the same product that had been working for you for a long time may suddenly stop. It just may not be right for you anymore. This makes it very important to be able to analyze your own hair texture, assess its needs, and make every wash routine unique to those needs. And to accommodate for all these needs, you're likely going to need a variety of products in your arsenal. I hope this is adding up for you and for anyone that is relying on one hair care brand to do everything for you, never put all of your eggs in one basket. But that still doesn't answer all of our questions because there are people that do have a consistent cleansing routine, are very cautious of their moisture and protein balance, and do have multiple products in their routine. Yet they are still experiencing breakage from using Diva Curl products. Let's get into breakage. Hair breakage happens all along a hair strand. Hair can break at the root, in the middle, on the ends, you name it, you name it. Now short hairs found throughout your head are not to be mistaken for new growth and new hairs that are growing back from hair fall. Now what's interesting in the case of the victims using Diva Curl is that they're noticing they're experiencing the exact same pattern of breakage throughout their head. Breakage is being found all along the hairline, the top of the ears, and the canopy. Breakage will always happen at the weakest link. Now along the strand of a curly hair, the diameter of the hair shaft actually changes. You can kind of feel that when you run your finger down a hair strand. Commonly for curly hair, in the twist of the curl, where the curl actually curls, the hair shaft gets thinner. This is why the tightest of curl textures are the most fragile. Also to note is the hairs all around your hairline are a different texture. They could be a different curl, so if they are curlier, they will be more susceptible to damage, but they are also finer in texture, which makes them weaker as well, which is scary. Breakage is scary. Of course, it's a huge red flag because if there's breakage, it indicates that there is damage. Is it possible that the products themselves are damaging the hair? Well, let's talk about damage. Damaged hair often feels very rough to the touch, is very tangled, frizzy, and dry. Now, people that have been using Diva Curl products from the cleansers, the stylers, treatments, or all of the above have noticed a lot more frizz in their hairstyles, that their hair textures have become extremely dry, there is a lack of shine on their hair, even a phenomena called flash drying, which is essentially when your hair looks really stringy and feels really dry even if it is soaking wet and with conditioner and it just won't clump. To determine why our hair may look and feel this way, we need to think of what consists of damaged hair. Damaged hair starts with a compromised cuticle and high porosity. The hair cuticle, which is essentially the roof over the house for the hair strand, becomes compromised, it begins increasing porosity in the hair. So this is gonna happen because the shingles of the roof are lifted off, therefore they can start breaking off, and this leaves the contents inside the house, inside the hair strand, which is your hair's melanin, your proteins, your bonds that hold everything together, it's gonna to leave them very vulnerable and susceptible to more damage. So how does this happen? High heat causes damage to both the cuticle of the hair by chipping away at it, and it can also do irreversible damage to the inside contents of your hair. Now the Diva Curl products have really been in question when it comes to heat. It is believed that the products are being altered when they are exposed to heat. But that doesn't really add up because not everyone uses heat on their hair, especially not if they're wearing their hair curly, and there is still a lot of damage being done. So what else causes damage? Well, sometimes when we're trying to help ourselves, we do too much. And doing this can cause high girl fatigue. Essentially, high girl fatigue happens by doing too much to the hair and overly hydrating. This condition will increase porosity in the hair because you're constantly putting it under the pressure of water. We see the hair cuticle as this thing that we think opens and closes and opens and closes, but it doesn't actually open and close. The hair strand itself swells when it gets filled with water, and when it swells, the shingles of the roof kind of lift off. Now, the more and more that hair strand continues to swell, the more damage becomes done. And this will happen when the hair is consistently introduced to a more alkaline state. Now, ideally, we want to lock in that moisture by sealing it into the hair strand. Well, what has an effect on sealing the cuticle? Well, I am so glad you asked. Hi, I'm Scientific Mel, in case you don't know me. 
I like to get nitty gritty. So to answer your question of what has an effect of sealing the cuticle, cute to tickle. Well, when we look back at the experiment we did last year, testing cold water versus hot water on the hair to really determine which would seal the cuticle, we actually determined that it doesn't have anything to do with temperature of water. The only thing that can affect your cuticle in terms of opening and closing is the th of a product, pH, the potential hydrogens. So why is the pH important? Well, actually, the normal skin surface, as well as the hair, have a pH that is acidic. Acidic. It is one of the acidics. Now, the acidity of our skin and our hair ranges between 4 and 6. Even water, which is a neutral level of 7 on the pH scale, is more alkaline than the skin and the hair. Just water alone, pure water, can cause the hair to expand about 20% of its weight. As a rule of thumb, the more alkaline a substance, the more swelling of the hair strand. And of course, some of the most damaging things that we can do to our hair is use high alkaline products. Products such as hair color, that is gray coverage, products like relaxers and perms, and even things like baking soda are more alkaline than the skin and the hair, and they will cause the hair to swell. Now things like hair color and relaxers they have a purpose for the hair. They are chemically changing it. That is what a high alkaline substance can do. It can chemically change the hair strand. Now, interestingly enough, these Diva Curl products seem to have a relaxer type effect on some people's hairs and are creating chemical damage. According to my calculations, in order for this to occur, they would need to be a high alkalinity. And in that case, they can cause damage to the scalp, the hair cuticle, and your hair texture. Now, I know something in question of the one conditioner is that there is sodium hydroxide in the products. Sodium hydroxide is found in lye relaxers. The ingredient itself is very highly alkaline, sitting at a 12.5 to a 13.5. Now, something you should know about the pH chart is that the further you move away from 7, so from 6 to 8 to 5 to 9, these substances, depending on where they sit, get exponentially more acidic or alkaline. So if our hair is around a 5, using a product with a 9 alkalinity is quite strong and can do a lot of damage, especially with repeated use. And so if these products do indeed have a high alkalinity, well, you know what? We'll just have to test it ourselves. Here I have my trusty pH tester. This professional grade, as found on Amazon, uh, does the job. And I have already calibrated it, so it is set and ready to go. And I will show you guys, together, we are going to test every Diva Curl product that we have here. Let's hope for the best. Well. My independent studies have shown that the products that I own are safe to use according to the pH balance, which is very, very important for the hair and the scalp. However, pH of a product can change. Products do have a shelf life and over time they will start to get bad. So I do suggest everyone do their own independent studies if this is something you are worried about. Testing the pH is very helpful, but also make sure you give your products a whiff. Analyze the color. Compare the texture consistency if you have something to compare it to. And if you're not sure what the product is going to do for you, definitely patch test it. This is not what I expected. In theory, it makes so much sense that if these products were the wrong pH, if they were in fact alkaline, that they would be causing hair damage, that they would be causing scalp damage and all these reactions to happen. But, as we've just tested, at least the products that I have are in fact safe for use. Okay, but wait, why is sodium hydroxide in these products? Is this relaxing the hair over time? Oh, yes, well, sodium hydroxide. Um, this is actually found in many products and it's likely in there to stabilize the product and to make sure that the pH is balanced. 
Although sodium hydroxide is a very alkaline ingredient, when it is put into a product that is very acidic, this action will neutralize the hydroxide in the ingredients. So it should not be harmful to the hair. Although it can be irritating to some people's skin. It is a chemical nonetheless. So the scalp burning, the extreme itchiness, the redness, the blisters, tenderness, swelling, dry scalp. Is that what that's from? Well, now those are all symptoms of dermatitis. Contact dermatitis, also known as contact eczema or eczema. Eczema? Eczema. I know. I don't know. Some people say eczema. And this is inflammation of the skin caused by contact with substances. Now this condition is very common. It can occur within a few minutes. It can occur over time. And it is due to the exposure of irritants and irritating ingredients. Now why would there be irritants in products that are deemed safe and for all curl kind? Allergic contact dermatitis will vary from person to person, but some pretty common irritants that are widely found in cosmetics are fragrances and preservatives. Ah, yes. Fragrances. Fragrances are frequent culprits to cosmetic allergies. It can cause a variety of issues for people from headaches to irritations, immediate reactions, but often sensitization develops over time, just like buildup happens over time. For someone that has been using a product for a while with no issues, but all of a sudden starts having these symptoms, it is important to note that these things can develop over time with more exposure to these ingredients. If you're wondering what is in these fragrances, well, we can't really know for sure. Fragrances do not need to be listed in the ingredients because there could be dozens of components in the fragrance alone. So they just stamp on fragrance and you don't really know what that consists of. But Diva Curl assures us that our products contain IFRA compliant fragrances at safe levels, so less than 1%, which align to global safety standards. Okay, so many people may have sensitivities and be allergic to fragrances, but for most people, they seem to be safe. Now, what about the preservatives? Because this is another common irritant that is in products. Now, preservatives are very important in cosmetics. They do tend to cause cosmetic allergens in some people, but they are very tough to avoid as they need to be in water-based products. Products such as skincare, cleansers, and makeup will all have to contain preservatives. Hmm. Preservatives, right? Like parabens, except parabens are part of Diva Curl's no list. It's important to know that just because a product contains no parabens doesn't mean that it doesn't have preservatives. It needs to have preservatives. I decided to look up, do Diva Curl products expire? And I found that products that are purchased from DivaCurl.com using a final sale promotion are not eligible for the satisfaction, guarantee, or other product exchange. Any issued merchandise credits can only be used at DivaCurl.com and have no expiration date. So something must preserve the products. And so in Diva Girl products, they use phenyl xythanol. Phenyl xythanol is known to cause allergic type reactions to the skin in some people, but it happens. These reactions can be a result of an allergy. Other people just have irritations when using this ingredient, but it is recommended to avoid this chemical if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, considering using it on a child that is three years old or under, or if you have an allergic reaction to it. However, if you're healthy and you don't have any skin allergies and you don't really need to worry about being exposed to this kind of irritant, as long as it is under the 1% concentration. This could mean that if you are piling on a bunch of products that do contain this ingredient, it could potentially exceed the safe amounts of use. But that goes for the leave-on products, not the rinse-off. So, I mean, that sounds really scary. It does. But the reality is, ingredients like this are used widely in cosmetics. And although they are considered safe for use by humans, apparently, they do provoke sensitization and allergic reactions to some people. And in the case of hair loss, well, people lose hair for a variety of 
reasons. People are noticing that they are experiencing a lot of hair loss, an excessive amount of hair shedding. Now first we need to remember that regular hair fall is completely normal. We can lose from 50 to 150 strands of hair a day. Sometimes this looks very scary, especially if you have not washed and detangled your hair for several days because it all accumulates and then it looks like you have lost half of your hair. But this isn't really a problem unless you are noticing all of a sudden there's an excessive amount of shedding and this has been happening for three or so months or longer. Some things that might be happening is that one, we are getting older every day. Many of times we experience a lot of changes in our bodies when we turn seven, which is when we're finally starting to mature, when we turn 14, which is around the time when we hit puberty, when we hit 21, which is around the time of adulthood, 28, and then 35, and every seven years or so, our bodies change. Every cell in our body turns over, and so we change. Our hormones change, and our hair can change too. So think about if you are experiencing a lot of hair loss and you're around that age, things can change. We also need to look back at our timelines and think, what has gone on in the last few months? Have you gone through a dramatic bodily change? Have you had surgery? Have you lost weight, gained weight, started taking or switched medications? Maybe you have developed a low thyroid or you are deficient in certain minerals and vitamins. All of these things can affect your hormones and they will trip your hair out. There's no set or specific time that these things happen. Sometimes these things happen unexpectedly and it's not always a sign of poor health, it's just that we are changing. We are getting old, it's our genetics. All of these things can play a part in hair that is thinning, hair lines that are receding, and texture that is changing. Or even more extreme, if you are noticing bald spots, you may be experiencing abnormal hair loss from alopecia. Again, if you are worried, see a healthcare professional, visit your doctor, run some blood tests, and make sure that you are healthy and, there's that word again, balanced. I have tried looking at this over and over, trying to figure out what really happened here and if Diva Curl is guilty of the claims being made. Now in the most extreme case, is it possible that there was a bad batch? It's highly unlikely, but it is possible. That could explain why not everyone has noticed a reaction to these products. Like me, for example, I tested the pH of my products. I assumed that my products were going to be very alkaline because of all the allegations that are being made. Especially, I mean, the leave-in, which I never really liked in my hair. I felt like I had that flash drying effect. I thought these must be high alkaline. That's the only kind of harsh substance that could have this effect on the hair, but yet, my products seem to be fine. That doesn't mean that yours aren't. This doesn't have to be exactly this one, but a pH tester is an amazing tool to have and is extremely helpful so that you can better understand what you're putting on your skin and your hair. Most products don't state the pH on the bottle, so in those cases, you're better off testing yourself before you potentially cause an imbalance in your hair and scalp. Plus, it's always a fun experiment to do at home. Now I know a lot of you are waiting for me to do my final verdict and many of you want me to give you some new product recommendations which to me to add new product recommendations in this video it just doesn't sound right. I think a big problem with these products is that people are not using products that are meant for their hair and I'm not just here to try to sell you products. I want to teach you how to use a product and explain to you why it may or may not work for you. So. I'm not going to be telling you guys which products you should be using. If you are curious to know what I use in my hair, I do have a ton of videos. I explain why I use them. The last product review that I did is currently what's in my hair now. Go check it out if you're interested. Absolutely loving this. Um, but again, I can't just tell you, you should use this because there's so many other variables, so many things to consider because you are unique. Now, do I think Diva Curl is safe to use? Well, well, 
now. Honestly, I'm not using very much of it. I'm using the products that I like, that I have been sharing because I don't have any problems with them. Am I gonna suddenly start no pooing? No chance! Um, I just don't think that it's worth the risk. And I suggest you do the same. If you don't feel like you're having any adverse effects and you're enjoying your products and everything's dandy and well, then continue to use what you're using. But if you do have a reason to believe that your products are giving you problems, stop using them. Don't use them. If you just bought them, try to return them. And I would seriously test them, especially if they're products you've been using for a long time. Compare them to your last product. Compare the smell. Compare the color, the texture. These will indicate if your product has gone bad or not. And for some solutions on how to save your hair, well, check out my channel. But, um, well, if anything, take this away from this video. Always monitor how your hair and your scalp feels. And just because a brand claims to be for all curl kind, the reality is not every product is for everybody. Just like how the curly girl method is not for everybody. And it's also not always the product, sometimes it's how we use it. At the end of the day, proper hair care comes from knowledge and experience. And that's what drives me to teach you guys each and every week with a brand new video. Although right here, right now, I can't tell you what to do with your hair because I can't see you. As your main tour, I can expertly advise you what to do as I teach you everything there is to know about hair care. But here is some tea that I will leave with you until the next video. Up next, we're gonna actually be talking about safety when it comes to the health of our hair and our bodies and the environment. What really makes a product safe or unsafe? Who is at fault? Can we for sure blame Diva Curl? But until then, this investigation is still ongoing. I believe this is only the beginning of this shitstorm, um, and Hurricane Hell is on its way. Until next time, this has been your main girl Mel, with my two cents and my take on the Diva Curl scandal. I hope that you have learned something new today. I hope that you stay inspired with your hair, don't give up, and enjoy the ride. It's gonna be okay. All right, well, that's everything. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Ma! Wonderful. For those of you, some of you who may die, but it's a sacrifice Diva Curl's willing to make. So, some of you, no, end it. Kill it with fire. My laptop won't shut up. It's getting really hot. It's getting really hot. I hope you can't hear it. I'll continue to speak louder. We're burning daylight. Okay, break's over. I could take a shit break, but I'll save it. I'll save it because the shit storm is still coming. My head hurts. I want to cry and die. We're talking about breaking. Oh my god, I'm halfway through. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. One more time. <sighs> we have burned daylight. I'm sweating my ass off. Well, we're just gonna have to save that. I just wouldn't mind. Well. That's how I feel, Diva Curl. Celebrate. I just did it for dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs>